Hello creative friends, this is Joy. So I have this new Donna Wakely mixed media journal that I recently got and decided to do an art journal page in it on this um, one page here that's got canvas. So I put some wax paper behind the art journal page and I got out my gesso and decided to smear some gesso over the canvas so that I would have an area that I could color and work on to create this art journal page that I wanted to create. But I decided I don't want to go all the way to the edge. I still want to be able to see the canvas around the edges. I just wanted uh, to be able to put some color um, in the middle of this page and decorate the page. So that's what I'm doing here, just with a palette knife smearing some gesso on there and then I take the heat gun to uh, the front and the back of it just to try to help at least get it started drying a little bit and it's not completely dry but I decided that the best way to color it would be just to spray it with some inks here that I had so I sprayed some of that on but it kind of splotched so um, I got some different sprays and then I tried to spray some of that on there again and it still was kind of splotchy and I didn't particularly care for that so I decided just to stick with the blue and the, the purple since they seem to be spraying um, well. And uh, I like the color, I thought it was pretty. So I used a heat gun to get that started a little bit um, to dry and then set it aside. And then I have this mixed media journal that I went through and I did a bunch of stamping in it with all of my a lot of my stamps. This is an idea that I got from Dinah Wakely watching one of her videos where she goes and puts uh, stamps, uh, all of her stamps in a journal and then colors them and, and cuts them out and uses them on uh, art journal pages. So that's what I did here. I thought, you know, that's a great idea. And I spent one weekend here recently just going through and put using a lot of my stamps um, in this journal. And that way it gives you the opportunity to use your stamps you know, which I have a lot, but I hardly ever use them. And I thought this is a great way to, you know, give me the chance to use some of these stamps that I've been wanting to use. So I picked the butterflies that I had already col colored previously. And this that's something that's easy that you can do while you're sitting there watching TV. And then I pulled out this uh, one stamp of a flower of these, I think they're pansies, they call them. I was going to color them with my Prismacolor markers here, but... I realized that the colors uh, were so saturated that it was completely covering up my stamping and I really didn't want that. I wanted to be able to see the stamped image so I pulled out my watercolor brush and I also wanted to do a variety of colors like I wanted to do like here um, the light purple and then I wanted to do a darker purple. And that way, you know, the flowers had some variety to them um, as far as the coloring, and they weren't all just one color. So um, the watercolor brushes here that I um, have seem to work pretty good for that. And I've really been enjoying these watercolor brushes. I've been using them a lot. I used these to color the butterflies in kind of the same way. I, I used a lighter color and then came in with the darker color. And... Um, yeah, I just really have been having a lot of fun with these brushes. They're Arteza watercolor brushes. If you're interested, I am not um, trying to sell their brushes because I am not a paid, you know, um, I don't get paid or whatever. It's just something recently so that I bought and been using and, and having a lot of fun with them. So I continue to color these flowers and then I go in to the centers with a little bit of a yellow orange and then I use a couple of different shades of green to color the leaves and um, the stems of these flowers. So that's what I'm doing. I'm starting with the lighter color green and I'm getting that on the leaves and the stems and then I come back here in a minute you'll see me with a little bit darker color green and then I'll even go to a third darker color green for the darkest areas. So I just wanted to get um, the lighter color on here first. And um, excuse me, um, I'll try not to have too many interruptions as I narrate this, but I've been sick trying to get over some uh, something and uh, yeah, it seems like everybody in Florida right now is sick. So. 
I don't know, the weather keeps changing. It's hot and sunny, and then it's cold, and then it's windy, and then it's rainy, and so, um, yeah, the weather's just been so unpredictable here um, this winter. Winter, summer, spring, it's like, it seems like it's uh, winter, summer, spring, and fall all in like, you know, a matter of the same month, two months. <laughs> It's like you freeze one day, the next day it's 80 degrees, next day it's windy and rainy, oh my gosh. And there goes my clock, so excuse the chiming of my clock. And then I decide, once I colored all of that, I'll wait till the clock finishes chiming. <laughs> once I finished all that, I was going to take my darkest green here. And go around the whole outside of it because I don't really want to fussy cut this thing out I wanted to just kind of do a general cut around the whole thing to I didn't want to leave a white border so I thought the best way is to use this darkest color green in the background and that way I can cut around it and then cut out my image you know so and then it would have this dark green <coughs> excuse me around it so that's what I'm doing here I'm quickly going around the whole thing and just um, adding this um, little bit of dark green around the outside of it. And uh, this went, you know, fairly quickly, I guess. I mean, obviously I sped it up so that you guys wouldn't have to sit through, you know, too long of a video. But um, it was fun to, to color. And so I just quickly cut it out. And I do go and... Um, cut out the butterflies and I take a little bit more time with the butterflies and I do fussy cut them because I wanted them to be cut out you know um, without any border or anything around them so uh, here I just you know cut them apart to make it easier to maneuver and cut them and then um, I'm just using the bigger scissors to quickly cut around the butterfly and then I've got the smaller pair there to get like, you know, more detailed cutting of the butterfly in the smaller areas um, to make it a little bit easier. So that's how I cut out. I don't go through showing you guys every single one of these. I think I turn my camera off and cut out the rest of them because I'm sure you don't want to watch all of that. I did try to cut around the little antennas, but I cut one of them off accidentally and I'm like, well, forget it. So I just cut them cut their antennas off and decided I would draw them back on later and then I went around the butterflies with the black pen just to you know cover up any white that was showing of the paper so that's what I'm doing here and that's how I did all of the butterflies so I decided that I wanted something in the background I just didn't want the color I just you know it just seemed like it needed something else in the background so I got these stamps here that um, I had um, and decided to stamp this just in black because I just want something that, you know, where you can see that there's something back there. Now, of course, it was a little bit hard to stamp, so I put the book underneath to try to help me stamp it better onto the background of this, um, of this page. And as you see there, the coils kind of got in the way, but I finally got them stamped on there. I wish they were a little bit darker, but you know, they were good enough. And then was figuring out where I was going to put my flowers on here, which um, I kind of made a mistake here. I just about glued them down upside down. Um, and so I put, I used Eileen's um, tacky glue and there I almost put it on upside down and realized it and turned it around and got a little bit of glue um, on the bottom there, but I end up uh, covering that up and then before pushing that all the way down I decided to where I was going to put my butterflies so on the back of the butterflies I put a little bit of foam tape on the wings because I wanted the wings to pop up a little bit so I took the other side of the uh, foam tape off and then put glue down the center and then um, put the butterfly on the page and that's how I did all three of these butterflies I just decided to use three of them instead of the four that I cut out. I decided not to use the pink one because there's no pink on this page, so it didn't make sense to put a pink butterfly on the page. And plus uh, I figured, you know, um, 
it looked better, I think, with the three. So I put down the butterflies on the page, and I ended up recently getting some Wink Estella pens, and uh, decided that I wanted to put that on the butterfly wings because I wanted them to have a little bit of shimmer and shine. So um, that's what I end up doing here in a minute. I guess I'm trying to use this little pen to um, add on the add the antennas back on the butterflies. It was a little bit hard, even though it was gesso that I had put on this um, um, this canvas or this uh, burlap. It still was a rough surface, so it was kind of hard to get the get it to uh, work on there. So here's the Wink Estella pens that I, I got. This was just the clear one that I used to um, put a little bit of shine on these butterfly wings. So that's what I'm doing here. This is my first time using this. I, you know, I guess, you know, it seems kind of cool. I couldn't really see the shine unless I tipped it, you know, um, in the light. So, and then I felt like that, well, kind of boo-booed at the bottom there with some glue. So I decided that you needed something else anyway, like a quote. So I went through my um, box of quotes, found this quote, and then thought it'd be kind of neat to put little strips of like um, pattern paper there so I just used a glue stick to glue these uh, different pattern papers together and ripped and tore them and then glued down the uh, quote on top of it. So then I decided to take a black marker and just go over the black part of it to try to make it a little bit darker. I don't know if it helped much but that's pretty much the art journal page for today. If you like it you can give me a thumbs up. Uh, you can also subscribe to my channel to see more, or you can leave my comment. I would love to hear from you. So that is pretty much, um, yep, I like it. It's done. So I will talk to you later. Thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.